China is now well known for building massively. The highest, the fastest, the largest, they all can be found within the borders of the country. High speed railway is not the exception. Historically, the economic development has been heavily linked to transportation and communication infrastructure. So, it is right to think that the future of the economic growth will be linked to the development of new transport systems like the high speed rail. I live in China, the world's most populous country, and it is certainly an accomplishment to say that it has by far the world's largest network of high speed railways. As a reference, by 2020, 75% of Chinese cities with a population of half million or more had already a high speed rail link. When I travel medium range distances in China, I love taking the high speed trains, mainly because of its punctuality, comfort, and time savings. Spain, which has Europe's most extensive high speed network and occupies second place in the global league table after China, is tiny in comparison. With just over 2,900 kilometers of dedicated lines built for operation at over 250 kilometers per hour. Nonetheless, I came to Spain to give a try to the local trains here and compare it to the ones we have in China. Let's see if the comparison is fair or not. I am right now on the way to a train station because I'm going to take a train going to a city called Zaragoza here in Spain and I'm also very thrilled because it's going to be my first time using a Spanish train. The point of this video basically is just to experiment and try and see what is the main difference between these Spanish trains and the Chinese trains that I've been showing you in some of my videos. There are quite a few differences, especially when we talk about infrastructure and the age of the trains and the services. And that's what we're going to discover today in this video. I just arrived in the station and it doesn't look that good, but the thing is I only have like 25 minutes just to reach the train track and I, I'm not familiar with this, so I, I better hurry up. I really hope there's not like a, lot of, a long process just to go to the train because as I said, it's the first time I'm just using actually a train here in Spain. China initially relied on high-speed technology imported from Europe and Japan to establish its network. Global rail engineering giants such as Bombardier, Ashton, and Mitsubishi were understandably keen to cooperate, given the potential size of the new market and China's ambitious plans. However, over the last decade, it is domestic companies that have developed into the world leaders in high-speed train technology and engineering, thanks to the astonishing expansion of their home network. By late 2020, China National Railways was operating more than 9,600 high-speed trains per day, including the world's only high-speed overnight sleeper services on selected longer-distance routes. On some routes, more than 80% of the track is elevated, soaring above densely packed cities and valuable agricultural land. More than 100 tunnels, each over 10 kilometers, have also been bored, along with spectacular long span bridges thrown over natural obstacles such as the Yangtze River. The driverless bullet trains connecting Beijing and Changjiakou in northern Hebei province are capable of hitting speeds of 350 km per hour, making them the world's fastest autonomous trains. Okay, I think I'm on time to catch the train. Actually, I was asking the person in charge. They are a little bit too rude to explain the details. Period. There are like two strikes with so many people. It's quite a long line, but I really, really hope I can make it on time. Just, one of the first main differences you start noticing is the access to the tracks. You need to go through a long security check, just like you would do in any airport, which takes some of your time. Also, I received the ticket on the app where I purchased the ticket, so I don't need to go to any window to print anything. That saves some of your time. The high-speed railways involves the installation of high-speed infrastructure, which is significantly more expensive than the conventional rail. 
Although its operational and maintenance costs are lower, the construction cost is high enough to make the high-speed railways an extremely costly alternative for transportation. However, in China, the social benefits are meaningful enough to make up for the high expenditure that high-speed rail requires. Like in many other countries, the benefits of this form of transportation include reduction of the economic disparity between regions, traffic congestions, and diminution of greenhouse gases emissions. High-speed rail is regarded as more environmentally friendly than the airline industry. Are the most competitive mode of transport for journeys which last under three hours since the access time is shorter in comparison to air travel and the journey is quicker than the car travel. I passed the security check and it's not quite a bit different because now you have the entrance to the different platforms in one part of the station that is a little bit confusing. The good thing is that each train has different companies that operate them. That's one of the main differences with mainland China, that all the trains are operated under the same company. There are more companies coming to operate their trains here in Spain. So you need to find what is your company and in the screens you will see the name and the number of the platform. So I'm arriving there right now. Looks like an underground uh, station and there are several tracks here. My track is number three and this is my train. It's operated by a company called Irio, which apparently is Italian, I think. Freccia Rosa is the name of the company, the mother company that operates uh, this train. Right here you can see the name. It's from Italy. And now since like, I think like a one year or two, they start operating here in Spain. Now, how the same technology has grown in two different ecosystems? The high-speed rail in both China and Spain is supported by the central government as the main investor. It also is regarded as an engine for the economic growth of the country as well as a way to advance social development. China has the largest high-speed rail network. It accounts for two-thirds of the world's total. It currently has a total of 42,000 kilometers of operational high-speed railway lines, with 28,000 kilometers under construction while Spain has a total of 2,900 kilometers with 1,300 more under construction. The high-speed rail network in Spain consists of four dedicated passenger train main lines, known as Línea de Alta Velocidad, connecting the main cities in the country. In contrast, the UK currently has just 107 kilometers, while the United States has only one rail route that barely qualifies for high-speed status, Amtrak's Northeast Corridor where Azela trains currently top out at 240 km per hour on expensively rebuilt sections of existing line share with commuters and freight trains. I'm, I'm on my train already. I already can start noticing some quite big differences between these trains and the trains we used have in China. We definitely here have more like a premium space, especially the seats are something like look like leather, probably more spacious. You also I think you have chargers and some other like amenities in the seats. Looks a little bit better, I have to say. Show you around. After Japan, more Asian countries started to operate high-speed rail. China is one of these countries, where the high-speed rail construction is by far the most progressive in the world. The Chinese have been exploring the possibility of implementing high-speed rail since 1988. Much like Japan in the 1960s, they are a symbol of the country's economic power, rapid modernization, growing technological advances, and increasing prosperity. For China, high-speed rail is also a powerful tool for social cohesion and integration of disparate regions with distinct cultures into the mainstream. China has created an entire high-speed rail network on an unprecedented scale, but it was necessary to build a mode of transport which could have a large capacity and consume less energy. China's first high-speed rail was launched in April 18, 2008. The priority railway was the line connecting Beijing and Shanghai. In China, the expansion of high-speed rail network is motivated not only to enable the country to compete in the global rail market and to build their own commercial and economic expertise, but also to decrease the traffic congestions when connecting big cities. We have a 
arrived already in Zaragoza. We are in Saragossa. This is a city not so far from Barcelona actually. It was like a very very smooth trip. Only one hour and 30 minutes around that time, which is quite okay. These trains are really good. I'm quite and gladly impressed of these trains. This is Italian high-speed technology coming to uh, Spain like a year ago and I'm so glad to see all these new options because I remember for one of the reasons I didn't want to take a train here in Spain is because of it was quite pricey. I mean, compared to airplane, for example, now is more and more accessible. This uh, ticket cost me only 15 euros, oh, definitely cheaper than a uh, an airplane ticket. Now it makes a stop of just like five minutes in this station because this train is going to go all the way to Madrid. This station looks actually very nice. I'm also impressed. Of course, it's not at the level of the high-speed stations that I visited in China, but it's still quite okay. I have to say, it's not bad. Folks, I'm gonna be wandering around nice and beautiful places here in China and documenting about it. I will also be Instagramming my day to day and my trips in this awesome country. Feel free to follow me and leave your comments and impressions over there about life in China. I will leave the link to my account in the description down below. Remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so you don't miss any of my follow up stories about what's going on in this part of the world. If you think there might be someone else interested in these kind of videos, please consider sharing. My name is Rafael, thanks for watching and stay safe until next time.